for a long time. And some parameters have to be set in terms of quality in tourism curriculums, tourism research, and many other aspects. And I think I did it to the initiative. I basically want to talk about tourism research, but before that, I want to just pick up a few lines from my previous speaker. And I have a request to make. For the last 13 years, or maybe say 15 years, I have been hearing in every tourism convention an accusing finger being pointing, uh, pointed out at the academics and the teaching curriculums. You know. The teacher what is being taught in tourism is not needed by the industry. It has no match with the industry and all this kind of a thing. And yet I am surprised that 80% of the people I meet in the industry, they want to do a PhD under me. Or they want to have a master's degree. If that education is irrelevant, then why this? I think it's time to stop pointing out of that finger. I throw a challenge in this house today. I'm not being emotional. I have no practical experience of tourism with any industry. I don't hold any degree in tourism. I throw a challenge, give me any business in tourism. And if I run that business in tourism, I will not fail by any MBA or any of the industry trained persons or any industry people who are trained in the tourism industry. It's not a question of tourism. It's not a question of tourism. It's a question, it's a question of your aptitudes, of your learning skills, your learning capabilities, and how you convert those learning skills and capabilities into knowledge and put that knowledge into operations. What does teachers do? What do institutions do? We are not supposed to create uh, uh, a Nobel Prize uh, winner every time. Our job in the institutions and in the uh, training institutes is that if the level of the person is C and if by teaching them something and all, we are able to bring them to a level B or to a level A. We have done our job. We have not taken the lifelong thing for them that lifelong we will be teaching them. They have to move out and do that. And secondly, a very interesting point. The tourism is not the career option for bright students even today. Why? Because a student after doing his MTA or a master's or a PhD in tourism is offered a job not even of 3,000 or 4,000 rupees by the if the industry wants better HRD, better committed people, people who understand the service sector, then you are not only going to demand that service, you have to pay for that service also. And unless you pay for that service, the industry will always keep using to a talent from moving into that area. Why does talent go to uh, the multinationals when they offer you 5 lakhs, 6 lakhs, or 20 lakhs or 40 lakhs per annum after doing your MBA? Tell me an MBA in tourism which has been offered even 10,000 rupees a month. So industry also has to modernize. It is not that you keep saying that education has to raise the standards, education has to improve quality, education has to give everything. I think it's time that the industry also should realize that they also have to work. There has to be a match making. It cannot be one side of it. I am one for those. I ask another question. All tourism teachers are from the country, different parts are sitting there. Tell me, in which board of studies in the universities or in the institutes, there is not a representative from the industry? Maybe local or maybe national or maybe any other place. My 80% of the course writers of the tourism courses are launched, I launched, are from the industry. And then if someone says, hey, you don't cooperate with the industry and you don't collaborate with the industry, in fact, let me tell you one more thing. How many times the industry, I would as an exception, I did it, has invited admissions to address themselves for various aspects of tourism in the industry conclaves. It is the admissions who always uh, invite the industry. <laughs> Want our students to do well in life, 
we are worried about placements and it is we who have been going to the industry. When were the doors, the doors closed in academia for the industry to fund research <coughs> or to collaborate with the academia system? Anyway, leave it at the past. I'll come back tomorrow to the theme which I have been assigned today, tourism research. I think it has three orientations, academic orientation, industry orientation, and the other what I will call a social or within brackets a liberal orientation. And I think all these three orientations have to be looked as complementary to each other. They can't be put on into isolated groups and studied separately in any aspect related to that. Because if you are developing an ecotourism product, you may have the best eco expert in developing that resort, but unless every staff member in that resort is eco sensitive, your product will not last. So you have to bring in the liberal aspect, you have to bring in the industry aspect, you have to bring in the academic aspect to that for the success of your product, rather than just some unscrupulous fellows putting their hotels green and calling it a green hotel. That is not eco tourism. That is not eco aspects related to that. Moreover, this research has to be interdisciplinary in nature. If today I have to conduct research in tourism, one will be handling 15 different disciplines. It is not short history, it is geography, it is anthropology, it is sociology, it is marketing, it is IT, it is management, what not? They have to be interdisciplinary areas which have to be looked into and not everyone is an expert to guide themselves over there. Then, what is required is more innovation, expansion, and then very crucial to that is the sustenance aspect. Why I say this more innovation, expansion, and sustenance aspect, along with an interdisciplinary approach, I think one or two small examples. I think one of the best tourism plans for Kashmir was made at a time by the data consultancy, sometime in the early 80s. If I look at that plan, and what happened? That plan was made by the practitioners, consultants, big names in the industry. But they did consult a social scientist in making that plan. So the political aspect of the state was forgotten. That what is the political condition of the state. Result, all that went into infrastructure development at that time got wasted for 15 years. Otherwise, one social scientist could have, one political scientist could have pointed out, hey, look, this is the political scenario you are there, where you are making these investments or making these aspects relative to that. We talked to the village heads of the seven villages around the Valley of Flowers. They had a very interesting thing to say. You come and tell us that we should conserve the ecology and environment of this area. We have conserved it through generations. Through thousands of years, we villagers have done that. It is you outsiders who have come and spoiled it, and you tell us and you lecture us and you bring in the idea that we should conserve it. So please control at your end, control your business in terms of this conservation aspect. Don't tell us the local villagers what we have to do. We have been carrying it out with this, uh, hundreds of years and generations over there. Uh, without scanning, and there's another aspect I like to say here, which yeah, and I am sounding an alarm bell on that. Today, in the age of this globalization, we are having a lot of talk about international standards. Please understand, if you follow international standards, there can be some basic standards in terms of hygiene, fares, travel, pollution, etc. But in terms of product development, if you start following the international standards, then you will lose your products. The only product you will kind of get is like the colors of Benetton. That in every country, everything, the same standard is there. It is contrary to international travel. It is a multinational conspiracy in travel. Okay, you have the same international standard every year. What about the uniqueness of Bali? Or say Nepal, or Himalaya, or Kavalia, or whatever other place? In, you talk of USP, you talk of something, uniqueness of your product. But you are telling that a person in a tire in a hotel should not stand with the moustache or in that Rajasthani dress it over there, the person should be in a tie in a suit. Why? That's not an international standard. Why you want to do away and kill these cultures which have a good market, which have good products to offer in tourism? 
but you want to kill these by bringing these international norms. I am not against international norms, but they can be in some basic areas only. You can't destroy the culture of the country. Okay? You, do you want to impose the entire Western culture on India, saying that this is an international standard? And what is an international standard? Will America or will China, will China agree to what is the American international standard in terms of culture? of salt. I am not against it, but I am saying take it with a little bit of high because don't lose your uniqueness of your tourism product in that way. <laughs> Definitely, the research should have emphasis both on qualitative as well as on analytical research. And unfortunately, when we come to the current scenario, I agree with my uh, limit when we said that there is hardly any research in tourism. With a few exceptions, when you would have Otherwise, the quality is extremely poor. I hope my teachers will not be angry with me, but we have to look at self research also when we look at certain other aspects also. It is research for the sake of getting a degree, thanks to UGC, because if you get a degree, then you can become a lecturer. So, somehow, how you get a degree, whatever you do, and not quality. There are malpractices in research, degrees are sold also, money is taken also. There is lack of expertise for guiding research in tourism also. As I then there is lack of good research students, there is lack of funding in research, and there is lack of collaboration between industry, academics, and NGOs in terms of research. I think some NGOs like Equations have done excellent research in terms of liberal issues or social issues. If you look at their, what they are bringing out, whether it is negative aspects of tourism or whatever it is, but those negative aspects are again being researched only to learn out of it. That's something how you can improve and how you do your projects into that. And then <coughs> there is a lack of international exposure and collaboration. I accept that as far as our research aspect is concerned. Now we come to what are the solutions to this pro these problems. The first and basic thing to be recognized is Acknowledge the relevance of research, both academics as well as the industry. I would like to know that how many businesses in the tourism industry actually invest in R&D? Forget others, actually invest in their marketing research. Forget other product design research or other aspect. What happens? Imitation. Delhi, Agra, Jaipur, Bunda Triangle, this agency is doing very well, that traffic, getting traffic from that place. Let me also start by tour packages, all Delhi, There are few exceptions. I have read admiration of people like Joe Slotnik, who did the Spice Village, who did the Coconut Lagoon, who did Bangarara, <coughs> many other places. They did well, they searched, they did the areas. But how many in the industry are doing that? It is pure imitation. <coughs> And this is typical to our small business enterprises. Okay, one shop succeeds, the other person also puts the shop over there with the soap and all. Okay, let me sell that and let me not do that any kind of And within that research, <coughs> I'll come a little later to the marketing and industry research aspect related to that. What is the relevance of research? This has to be realized. As an awareness for quality research has to be created. Otherwise, sometimes this happens in academics also. Before I get the thesis, I get a phone call. Kabhi mere student ki thesis aage hi zara approve kar de. Let us accept that hard fact of life. This is what it is. And this we go on to the academics. <coughs> then, <coughs> there is a need to develop a nodal agency for research companies. Today, I don't know what is happening in Kurushetra University. Kurukshetra University doesn't know what is happening in Himachal University, which topics have been approved. We don't know what is happening in down in Pondicherry South. There was a time when Association of Indian Universities or I think Indian Council of Cultural Research used to collect that data. But I think a time has come when, and I think IITM may take this, uh, IITM may take the lead in this regard, that you, at least we from the academic institutions, we share among ourselves yeah, this is the topics which have been approved for research, so there we can check the application, we can be more innovative. And similarly with the industry, okay, 
on these items there is research going in the universities. Will you like any other topics to be researched? Or will you sponsor research for these aspects and let there be this kind of a collaboration between the industry and this? Then one more thing I'd like to say. <coughs> this is again where the academics will have to give away their rigidity of saying that we only know. We must recognize industry experience for research guidance. If someone has been a marketing manager in the tourism of a good company, has vast nice experience in marketing, why can't the person guide research in a university? We have to <coughs> devise some policy in this regard. So that will be more better understanding for the students also. More for, you can put them with co-supervisors that one from the industry and one from the institution. But I think uh, I think Thakur Sahib gave me a very good research if someone wants to do uh, uh, research on how on providing the French tourists to India and what is the mark, French market and all that. Why can't give me a supervisor for research? Why only I have to find this research? Similarly, credit sharing in terms of industry experience for your degree jobs. Someone has remained after being a BA finance manager in a good company for say 5 years or 7 years and the person wants to do a BA in finance. Why can't some credits be given to that person for having that, that experience while doing that MBA? Why should the person has to take admission for 2 years and do all the 30 courses or whatever it is required? <coughs> I think it's time. <coughs> this kind of Flexibility has to come. Then one has to provide funding also for international exposure of the faculty, of the guys. <coughs> Our teachers, I don't know people in the industry, you know it's very interesting in the industry, you know, because all kinds of commissions, concessions, and everything are there. You don't realize that if a teacher has to travel by air for a conference also, how much agony and pain a teacher has to face within the university system for getting a pretty grant of 15,000 rupees or 20,000 rupees and the kind of humiliation a teacher has to face for that regard. Because there are people sitting above them and layers and all and sitting over judgments over there. And I think it's high time that we create some kind of a funding for research. I had proposed this in the tourism ministry. And let the tourism ministry keep a budget of 10 lakhs or 15 lakhs or 20 lakhs. For this aspect only, that people can travel to seminars, go to conferences and do that. They may waste up 20 lakhs in holding a function, but they will are not prepared to give 20 lakhs for a budget this kind of a thing to facilitate this kind of interaction and this kind of interactivity between the scholars and between the, the teachers and the uh, industry. All the we must motivate brilliant students to undertake research. Let me tell you, the hospitality sector is also losing. Yes, I'm just going to go like that. Once that things have been converted now to BSc degrees or BSc uh, or whatever it is, they are moving for CAT, they are moving for MBAs and all, not joining the hospitality industry. A similar thing with emerging tourism industry. Unless the tourism industry relies on things that well they can manage by their own training and all, whatever it is, but they won't be getting the bright one is the bright generally what is. Then I think there has to be a need for orientation programs and uh, refresher programs for research guides also. We also have to update our knowledge as guides. We can't remain updated and updated all the time, whatever kind of pressures we are. You need thank time you off for jobs to refresh Shall yourself thank you for guiding research. That kind of program has to be there. And a holistic approach to research rather than taking uh, a kind of a narrow approach or segmented approach in that. Now, one example I'd like to give 